Conventionally, reinforced concrete piers have been the support structure of choice for modern day bridge construction. However, as technology advances, convention seems to be shifting. There's a new kit on the block called Geosynthetic Reinforced Soil, or GRS, and it's changing the footprint of many modern day structures. Although geosynthetic reinforced soil has been around a while, its use as part of an integrated bridge system, or IBS, is fairly new. The concept of reinforced soil, geosynthetic reinforced soil, came about in the, in the early 1970s when the U.S. Forest Service used non-woven geotextiles to build burrito walls, wrap-faced walls in the steep mountain terrain for logging roads. Uh, Colorado DOT, uh, during that time, took notice of what the U.S. Forest Service was doing and uh, refined the technology. In the early 1990s, about mid-1990s, we used the technology. We actually built a, a, a full-scale experiment here at Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center in McLean, Virginia, to demonstrate the load-bearing capacity of, of reinforced soil. We determined that it's extremely predictable when you build it in a closely spaced fashion as we do today in the IBS. And a couple of years later, we were given the opportunity here at Turner Fairbank to build the prototype IBS. After the success of that project, in the early 2000s, the FHWA introduced the Bridge of the Future initiative. And we piggybacked on that concept, and we continued to work and with the DOTs and with the locals to uh, seek out projects to build GRS abutments in the IBS. In 2005, Defiance County, Ohio built the first production IBS system, the Bowman Road Bridge. Today, that bridge is performing very well, and as a result, the county has built 23 other bridges using the GRS IBS system. In 2010, St. Lawrence County in New York took notice of the successes in Defiance County and are now using the technology to replace many of their own bridges. How does the GRS IBS system work? The GRS IBS is supported by a Reinforced Soil Foundation, or RSF. The RSF is an economical, shallow foundation consisting of layers of geotextile and compacted fill. The GRS abutment and integrated approach is engineered to accommodate settlement, allowing for a smooth transition from the bridge onto the roadway, thus alleviating the bump at the bridge, normally caused by uneven settlement. Constructing a GRS abutment is often described as being as easy as one, two, three. It requires placing a row of facing block, a layer of granular fill, and a sheet of geosynthetic reinforcement, and repeating the process up to the specified height of the abutment. This method has been proven in the field to facilitate quick and efficient construction with impressive results. Um, it's fairly simple once you understand the concept that by putting the sheets of geotextile in the compacted stone that it be be behaves as a composite and has uh, engineering properties, it has a stress strain curve that's fairly predictable. You're really designing these abutments as a, as a gravity wall. To fully benefit from the rapid construction available using GRS technology, it is important to follow guidelines for GRS abutment construction. First, since all other courses of block are built off the first row, make sure that the bottom row is level and even. Second, for optimal productivity, use only the crew and equipment necessary. Divide the labor into three basic steps. Step one, laying the block. Step two, placing and compacting the backfill. And step three, laying a sheet of geosynthetic reinforcement. Finally, limit the movement of the excavator towards the back of the abutment where it can reach and place material without having to be moved. The whole process is fairly rhythmic, um, fairly uh, routine in terms of once you get the concept down of stack and compact, um, it is a very uh, repetitious process. That Once that idea is learned, the, the rest of it uh, just becomes kind of a, a rhythm that the wall just constructs. Because of the simple process, a large crew is not necessary to successfully construct a GRS abutment. A typical construction crew consists of laborers and the equipment operator. 
In comparison to a traditional bridge, uh, the GRS IBS system, I'm going to tell you uh, is 10 times more simple for your average layman to build. Uh, like I said, you can take most road construction people. They don't even need to be bridge people. You can start at the bottom. Within a few weeks, you can have a bridge standing. Specialized equipment is not required to construct a GRS abutment. Readily available tools like hand tools and measuring devices are all that's necessary. Heavy equipment, such as a track hoe excavator and a walk-behind vibratory plate tamper, will also be needed. The first step in constructing the GRS IBS is site preparation. Since GRS technology requires building from the bottom up, staging and delivery of the material should not hamper continuous construction. It is important that diversion trenches be placed around the perimeter of the site to divert any water. As with construction of the GRS abutments, site preparation is also fairly straightforward. Uh, it's a fairly simple process of uh, digging down to a known elevation for the foundation to begin and once you've reached that elevation to start building or constructing the wall from the bottom up until you reach the, the uh, desired elevation at the top. Once the site layout and excavation are complete, it's time to begin constructing the reinforced soil foundation. The base should be cut smooth, sloped to drain, and excavated to a uniform depth. All loose, unstable material should be removed, backfilled, and compacted to provide a good foundation. Laying the reinforced soil base can typically be completed in one day. The next step in building the GRS IBS is to encapsulate the soil foundation with geotextile to prevent erosion. Typical spacing in the reinforced soil foundation is 12 inches. Once the soil foundation has been fully encapsulated, compaction begins. Place the fill from the back to the edge of the RSF and roll out any folds or wrinkles to the free end of the layer. The soil foundation should be backfilled in compacted lifts not to exceed six inches. The final step in this phase is building the GRS base. The typical base is constructed with split-faced concrete masonry units and compacted backfill. Properly compacted backfill is crucial to GRS IBS performance. Compact all areas behind the split-faced concrete masonry units so that no voids exist below the geosynthetic reinforcement. A thin leveling layer of fine aggregate can help set the CMU blocks to grade and prevent them from rocking. The leveling layer should be kept to a minimum thickness of no more than 0.5 inches. Before placing the geosynthetic reinforcement, it is important to sweep off any granular fill from the top of the block. This will prevent cracking of the facing blocks. The GRS project will determine the number of reinforcement zones needed. Reinforcement zones represent different lengths of reinforcement away from the wall. Roll out the geotextile so that the greatest reinforcement strength is perpendicular to the wall face. Where one roll ends, the next roll should begin. Overlapping between the sheets of reinforcement is not required. Any excess reinforcement material should be removed with a razor knife or a propane torch. Preventing wrinkles in the reinforcement material is crucial. Therefore, place the fill from the wall face backward so that any wrinkles that do form can be removed. Construction of the GRS abutment continues with alternating layers of compacted granular fill and geosynthetic reinforcement according to the design plans. As the abutment wall is being constructed, it is crucial to maintain the proper wall face alignment. Check the vertical GRS wall for plumbness at every other layer. Any deviations greater than 0.25 inches must be corrected. As the upper layers of the GRS abutment are constructed, a bearing reinforcement bed is constructed to provide additional strength to support the increased loads due to the bridge. The bearing bed reinforcement serves as an embedded footing within the GRS abutment. The spacing of the reinforcement in this location is half the primary spacing or two layers per course of block. 
The depth of the bearing reinforcement zone is determined based on the internal stability design for required reinforcement strength. At a minimum, there should be five bearing bed reinforcement layers. For a bridge with super elevation, it is important to ensure that the minimum number of bearing bed reinforcement layers beneath the beam seat is installed across the length of the abutment face. At this point, the reinforcement layers become stair-stepped with reinforcement terminating along the angled surface of the elevation. Pinning and grouting the upper three courses of block completes construction of the facing wall. It is important to suspend any construction activity near the face once the top of the wall has been pinned and grouted to avoid wall displacement. Once the abutment wall is completed, the beam seat is constructed directly above the bearing bed reinforcement zone. The superstructure will be positioned on top of the beam seat. Proper beam seat construction begins by placing four inches of pre-cut foam board on top of the bearing bed reinforcement. It is important to make sure the foam board is butted against the back face of the block. Next, place a solid concrete block on top of the foam board across the entire length of the bearing area. The final step is wrapping the layers of the compacted fill. The thickness of the wrapped layers is essential to maintaining the final beam elevation. The fill thickness of the first 4-inch wrapped layer should be compacted to the top of the foam board. The fill thickness of the second wrapped layer should be compacted to the top of the solid block. The top of the second layer controls the beam elevation. Therefore, it should be carefully compacted and graded. As an option, aluminum flashing can be installed after construction of the beam seat and prior to setting the bridge beams. If used, the flashing serves as both a drip edge and a clear space filler. Place the flashing between the bottom of the beams and the foam board. Make sure the length of the flashing extends beyond the outside of the bridge beams. Finally, trim the flashing so that it fits against the parapets. Placement of the superstructure occurs following construction of the beam seat and flashing installation. Make sure to set the beams so that they are square and level. Never drag the beams over the beam seat surface. The wing walls and parapet are constructed following placement of the superstructure. First, trim the split-faced concrete masonry unit in the parapet wall for a custom fit against the beam edge. Next, fill the space between the superstructure and the facing block with thin layers of cut block or mortar mix. Following completion of this phase, approach construction can begin. The GRS integrated approach is constructed of aggregate layers reinforced and wrapped with geotextile that blends the approach way to the bridge deck to create a smooth transition. It is important to use well-graded material throughout this phase and to trim the geotextile reinforcement to the prescribed length after it is wrapped. Repeat this process until reaching a height approximately two inches from the top of the beam grade. The wrapped layers are then placed behind the beam end. There are a few guidelines to follow for pavement of a GRS project. First, during paving, it is important to keep the top layer of reinforcement approximately two inches below the beam grade. This will allow a layer of aggregate cover to be placed to protect the geotextile reinforcement from contact with hot mix asphalt. Also, the paving fabric should extend three feet over the bridge deck onto the approach. Finally, if guardrail installation is part of the project design, it is recommended to use steel H posts for any railing that is driven through the reinforcement. It is also possible to drill through GRS with an auger to set other types of posts. These procedures for constructing a GRS IBS have been proven in the field to facilitate quick and efficient construction. Additionally, GRS IBS provides faster project completion at a reduced cost because the design is flexible and therefore easily modified in the field. Uh, the biggest benefit to the GRS IBS system is the adaptability to the different sites. Um, again, the over excavation that's not required as part of this. We can put it on unsuitable soils. We can put it in, in um, 
water environments uh, where uh, you would normally have to have piles for uh, a standard concrete. Um, it's uh, obviously it's cheaper, it's faster, and in the time, these economic times that we're in now, it's cheaper and faster is obviously a, a big, big factor. It's, it's not traditional, so uh, to, to look at it from the outside, it looks to be a little bit, uh, you might question it, but once the construction process starts, you can quickly see um, how easy the concept is and how flexible you can be in times of construction uh, with, uh, you know, rain, weather, it, it doesn't really shut anything down in terms of uh, uh, moving the construction process along. There are three primary advantages for using the GRS IBS. It's faster, more economical, and easier to build than traditional bridge structures. Additionally, research indicates that its long-term durability will be better because it has fewer parts and because the substructure and superstructure are blended with the approachway to create a jointless bridge system. The GRS IBS system doesn't have many of the common elements associated with a traditional bridge, particularly those leading from the roadway to the bridge. For example, it doesn't have an approach slab or a sleeper slab, and it eliminates the bridge bearings. GRS IBS is not for every bridge building assignment. It is, however, a perfect solution for smaller, single-span bridges. The system is currently tailored for single-span bridges up to 140 feet. The longest bridge constructed to date is a 140-foot steel girder bridge. That bridge is performing very well, even throughout its thermal cycles. There have been no adverse effects seen on the approach way. GRS IBS is great for grade separations, although the bridges completed to date are built over streams with non-scour conditions. It is a shallow foundation system and thus not suitable for scour critical areas. However, the technology works very well for both steel and concrete superstructures. In Defiance County, the first bridges built using the GRS IBS provided them with a 21% cost savings. Today, Defiance County is saving up to 40% on their bridges because of their ability to rapidly construct the substructure. They understand how the technology works, and the labor crew is well trained. In St. Lawrence County, their savings are even greater because in their previous design methodology, they include many of the details associated with a traditional bridge, such as the approach slab, the sleeper slab, the bridge bearings, and the parapets. With the GRS IBS, you don't need those traditional elements. St. Lawrence County has realized a savings of between 50 to 60 percent on all the bridges they are currently building. Recently, the interim implementation guide for the GRS IBS was completed. This guide is the result of about 40 years of research. It consists of two volumes, one specifically for the design and construction of the GRS IBS. The other volume contains a census report of all the available research supporting the design and construction of the GRS IBS. For others thinking about GRS, uh, the, the thing to do first is kind of get comfortable with it in terms of how it works, understand the, the fact that th there's a lot of data that shows that you can trust that if you put it together this way, you'll get the kind of performance that we've seen. And then to get comfortable with the actual construction. It's been a good fit for us. I can quite sincerely say that from the, from the beginning of, of uh, researching this technology, it has amazed me with each experiment. It's so far exceeded our expectations. And when we built the IBS, the designed the IBS, we redesigned the bridge where we got rid of all the common elements associated with the bridge and redesigned it from the bottom up. I think it could be used on the interstate system uh, once people take more notice of its long-term performance on these local road systems. I, 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 I truly believe the technology has a home in all facets of earthwork, not just in, in, in bridge support applications. The many advantages GRS IBS technology offers make it a viable choice for many bridge projects.